We are here at 6.30 at the Roar Zone. And I'm excited about this show because this lady wears more hats. And you're going to need more heads, right? It's a <laughs> professional speaker, professional speaking coach, author, business coach, life coach. Hypnotherapy. Hip, hypnotherapy, right? Neuro-linguistic programming. The NLP. Yeah. Um, Strategic intervention. And connected with Tony Robbins and have been connected with Tony Robbins for, for almost 17 years. Almost 17 years. And uh, so we're going to dive into all that. And as usual, what we do here at the Monster Motivator TV, we, we take you behind that black curtain, get them to know who you really yeah. are and uh, where it all started, where you're at today, where you see yourself going, chunk that thing. Okay. Deal? It's okay. You got it. My name's Johnny Urban. The, my maiden name is actually McClellan. I'm very Irish. I okay. was born a redhead, <laughs> and I still am. The difference is now it comes out of a tube instead of, you know, <laughs> right, my but, head. It, but the color still fits. <laughs> yeah, yeah it's, still, it's still there. It still goes with me. So I'm very Irish. Urban is my married name. My husband's sitting over here in the corner. And so when people hear my name, Johnny Urban, they just say, oh, that's such a rock star name. It, it actually <laughs> yeah. is. It really is. So I, I, I'm living up to that. I really enjoy it, playing with that. See so how the universe works? <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> like energy attracts like energy. Yeah. So where did you, where were you born and raised? Where did you grow up? I was born and raised uh, up in Northern California, okay. Auburn, California. And it's a very, I, I love visiting there because it's a real old town. It's it? this beautiful yeah. old town. You just like feel like you're stepping into a western, you know, every time you go there. So I love to visit there. And Is that how and, it was when you grew up? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was. And, and lived all over Northern California. We moved quite a bit. My oh. father was a fireman oh, for yeah? the state of California. Oh, for the, like the forest fires? Yep, the four, wow. Division of Forestry. And he got transferred, and we moved all around wherever he needed to go. We lived in some interesting places. Really? Wow. We actually lived in a firehouse that was closed for the season. And we got to live in the barracks of the fire where the firemen got to. Now, know, how old were you about that? About that time? Oh, I was probably eight or nine. Wow. Yeah, I totally remember all that cool stuff. And we moved all around. Finally ended up in Southern California when I was around 11. Okay. My dad got transferred down to a little town named Blythe, right on the river. <laughs> right, yeah. We were river rats. Boy, we were right. water skiing river rats. <laughs> wow. And, um, and went there, you know, lived there for quite a while, and okay. then ended up moving again, and then ended up in Orange County. I think I've been in Orange County for over 30 years now. Wow. Okay, yeah. but you, you're a really California girl from, mm -hmm. begin, from the beginning. Yeah. Wow. How was it yeah. moving around? Was it hard to, like, you know, you're in a new town, you're a little girl, yeah. and you have to kind of get reacclimated, yep. get the friends again. You, mm -hmm. what, what was some of, how was that for you? For me, it was not hard. Okay. It, my mom had four kids, three okay. girls and a boy. She was really super busy. Okay. And, but it was, for me, she always made it look, made us feel that we were going to go to new places, meet new people, have new adventures. Oh, so she painted the picture of, she, this is going to be fun, yeah, right? This is yeah. going to be new. And yeah. exciting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so for me, I, I, I embrace that. I was technically a middle child of the four. Okay. And so I got to just kind of like meld in with the group and do whatever I wanted to. I think my older sister and my younger siblings didn't like moving so much. I'm the only one that has stayed transient through my adult life. Okay. So you, you kept it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because I enjoy it. I yeah. love it. I'm just a, a little adventurous person in me. I love it. And it's really hard because we talk about me being highly sensitive. Right. I've always been highly sensitive. It's something that we're born with. Yeah. And yet I have this sense of adventure. Mm. So um, I don't know if I shared this with you, Dave, or not, but there's description of being highly sensitive, but about an eight, and about 15 to 20% of the population are highly sensitive okay. by research. Okay. But inside that 15 to 20%, 30% of those people are high sensation seekers. Okay, so we need to dive into that. <laughs> yes. Well, let me, let's go back a little bit, though. When did you start to understand and know that you're a highly sensitive person? Was it early on? Or? No, that, this only, I only realized this about uh, five years ago. The actual definition of what it is and the label and the title of it. Mm -hmm. It was around mm -hmm. five years ago. Wow. And as I studied it and researched it, I was like, oh my gosh, I've been this way my whole life. Man, the more you talk, the more we have a, so much in common. But I got a question for you, yeah. right? 
I didn't realize that it was only about five years ago, you know, that you've discovered that because probably pretty close to around when I discovered it, right? Yeah. And, and don't tell me, but I'm also a creative person. Oh. Shh. I found that out too. Um, but when you realized it, right, yeah. and when you identified with that and when you accepted that label, yeah. right, um, when you looked back in your life, did more things make sense? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Right? It just made sense. Like, you're yeah. like, all right. Oh, okay. When you when you yeah. look at certain things back in your life, right? Because I want you to really dive into this. Because this is really interesting. This is cool to me, right? <laughs> um, the other thing is, like you said, 15 to 20% yeah. are high, considered highly sensitive, right? Yeah. So when you are highly sensitive, because not everyone is, you kind of feel like, man, what's wrong? That's right. Which, which, what? I, there must be something wrong. We are literally wrong. outnumbered. Right. We're, we're <laughs> it's a only minority. Like 80% right. of the other rest of the world are just <laughs> we're, like, okay, we're outnumbered. We're a minority. And, and I'm doing all this, and I want you to really explain what that is, because I think I, would, I misunderstood it for a long, long time, right? But once I did, the clarity for me really came in, obviously, for you. I could see it. I can see the whole, your whole face changed right? when I said clarity. Before you get into the definition, Right. Give us some some things when you look back now that you know and now that you teach this. When you were a little girl, when you were a teenager, when you were a young adult, that give us some examples of a highly sensitive person, but you didn't even know it. Hmm. Can, you, can you do that? Well, the one common thread, okay. that the one that, that sticks out the most, is that I would always find the one person that's sitting alone in a corner somewhere that is that they separated themselves from the crowd mm -hmm, because they mm -hmm. didn't feel like they fit in. Mm -hmm. And they and I could just sense and feel that they were not happy. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to make them feel better. Mm -hmm. it, I just had this in, instincts to go over and talk to them. It didn't matter how old they were. It could be a grown adult or a small child. Mm -hmm. It didn't matter. I would go It's like a magnet. Yeah, yeah. I would be like, oh my gosh, that we're kinder spirits or somehow. You know, and I'm going to help them. You know, the, the masses were over here having fun, and I'm just like, let's go find out about this person. Okay. Why are they there? Can I make them happy? And it's not that I wanted them to join the other group. No. That was not even in Identify it. Identify what's going no, on, No, it, right? was, it was almost like, okay, I want to appreciate where they are, who they are, where they are, and, and while they're sitting over here by themselves. Just, just yeah. embrace it yeah. and help them feel better. And you probably found yourself in deep conversation and maybe not all the time but a connection it, it it was it was like we were in our own little world yes so I believe it to this point that I found another highly sensitive person mm -hmm. that didn't fit in that didn't know what to do or say and then all of a sudden we were kinder spirits we were both sitting there together mm -hmm. ha having some deeper conversation than just talking about the color of our shoes yeah you know? yeah no because because you, you you actually can't help it but go deep, right? When 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 somebody oh, we honor that. Yeah. Oh my gosh, we go there, and if we don't have deep conversations it, with people, it's, there's a disconnect. It's our oxygen. Yeah. It's our oxygen. <laughs> it, is. Kind of girl. It, like... it is. It's it is. It's it becomes our oxygen. Yeah. Small talk is like don't waste my time. Kind of thing. If you if you could look back when you were a little girl, though, is there things that that now you know that how you were, so mm -hmm. so people can identify in themselves yeah. whether or not that that connects. Yeah. Yeah. Or, just as important, the parents or the grandparents, right, mm -hmm. that get that definition, and now their grandkids or their kids, yes. right, they might be able to identify yep. that. Yeah. It was like I, I was deeply connected to nature. Mm. Anything that had anything to do with being outdoors and being with the plants and the animals that were in nature. And living in Northern California, I mean, it's everywhere around you. I mean, it's so easy to get to. And it wasn't raised in a city. I was wow. a country girl, so it was so easy. And so you felt it was normal. But right. then when I moved to the city, and all right. of a sudden I'm in a big city, and I feel like I'm, I'm just starving for nature all right. the time. So right. I filled my house full of plants. Right. There was a void. Yeah. There was like that, that natural void. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And it's interesting that you went there and you said that because, and I say this all the time, I actually feel bad. For people yeah. that don't connect to animals 
And for me, especially dogs, and the other animal for me, <laughs> is an elephant. To me, it's an yeah. old soul. Yeah. It just, there's something there for me yeah. when I look at an elephant's eyes. But, and it's interesting. So, let me share this with you. Okay. So, I was adopted. So, from the time I was born to 18 months, I was in an orphanage. And then I, I was adopted, you know, at 18 months old. And my parents, uh, my mom just passed this year, so we were going through her stuff, and there were some notes written f from the orphanage, yeah. you know, and then they must have given it to her, right? Different things that yeah. they noticed. And I don't know if they meant TV or physically, I don't know. But every time that my focus would catch an animal, especially a dog, I would smile, I would, like, just just come alive and uh, and it must have been enough to where they noticed it to where they actually wrote it down wow. in notes about yeah. me i got the chills yeah because because wow. yeah. yeah isn't that it, so like when you said earlier you're born with this yeah it's so it's mm -hmm. so interesting that that you said that so so i'm glad that i'm glad that you shared that with us so Give us more about this. Give us more. Well, the other big, the other really big thing is that we tend to be the voice of reason for people. Okay. We tend to notice when there's a wrong being done or something wrong being said. Okay. About about something and and we we'll speak up. Okay. We're the ones that, that actually step in and make changes in the world because we feel that's the right thing to do. Mm. Save the planet. Save the animals. Mm -hmm. We're and we're those. We're the voice of reason. Okay. For a lot, a lot of people. And, but we, but we can be afraid to step up. You know, there's a fear there mm -hmm. because number one, we're raised in an environment where we, where we are unusual for the masses and we're told a, quite a bit as children to stop that. Don't do that. Yeah. That's weird. Be you know, quiet. Yeah. Thanks. All this kind of stuff. And because we're so sensitive, we, we, we get attached to animals. We get attached to, um, um, energies like we feel the energies coming from the trees does that make sense yeah, yeah yeah and and when we talk about that then all of a sudden we're going like oh that's weird stop doing that so we close up see i feel the energy you say from the trees right yeah. i feel the energy from the outs outside like so i i don't know i can count on one hand throughout the year how i how much i have my air conditioning on right i love the windows open i love the breeze i love that I just love that that feel, and that's what I why I fell in love with Southern California when I came out because the the, the weather, uh, you know, allows you to be outside yeah. and enjoy that that I call it freedom. It's it's like a free. I, I could define yeah. it as freedom to me. Yeah. You know, I, I love that. I love that feel. So, mm -hmm. I guess it would for me it would be yeah the trees and the nature, but the uh, the outside. And I love the sun mm -hmm. and the smells. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's as long as we are resourceful and we've taken care of our health and we're good, mm -hmm. we can handle that. But then it's really super easy for us to get into overwhelm. Like when we have our Santa Ana winds, okay. and if they're, for me, if they're blowing for the one evening and then they're gone the next day, I tend to be fine. I'm okay with that. But if they keep blowing for like three days, by the third day, I'm just like, get me out of here. Close yeah. the doors, the windows. Well, you're, you're, it's too much. Yeah, you're feeling uh, it's suffocated. Like a, it's like a friction yeah. on us. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and, and you have to re also to remember is like, the term highly sensitive people doesn't mean we're all, it's a spectrum. It's like somebody could be highly sensitive over the, real over the top spectrum, but then other people can be really on the low spectrum okay. side of it. So okay. it, it's all or in the, the range. Middle. Yeah, it's all a range of, of everything. And some people are sensitive to outside influences like the wind, and some are more sensitive to people's influences. Does it change day to day? Is, are you more sensitive one day than well, you? Well, yes, it can be. And it all depends how, much, how, much, how well did you sleep the night before? Mm -hmm. what, did you get good sleep? Did, okay. you, did you overwork at work? Did you eat right? Mm -hmm. you Lifestyle. Know? Yeah, yeah. How are you taking <coughs> care of yourself and nurturing your sensitive side of you? Allowing okay. it and, and respecting it and allowing it to to guide you into your everyday life and not ignoring it. The more you ignore it and push it away, the more you, it's going to be a struggle back and forth. Yeah, because you're going, you're not in alignment. Yeah, exactly. Right? You're out of alignment. Exactly. You're, you're paddling upstream mm -hmm. instead of letting the current take right. you. 
Yeah. You can't imagine this. One time I met this woman in one of my workshops that I was giving for sensitive people. She was 80 years old. And she came to my workshop. And she sat there. And an hour later, when we were all done, she, she got up. She came to me. And she goes, oh, my God. She was crying. 80 years old. She goes, oh, my God. For the first time in my life, I feel normal. After hearing and being with other sensitive people, mm. and she just for the first time in her life at eighty, it was a, it was a gracious gift for me yeah. that she finally yeah. get, understood mm. what it meant to to be the way she is and to accept it mm. completely and fully. Man, I, that, that how did you come to know this? How did you come to learn this about yourself and then be able to to share it? That, there's had to be an aha moment. That that and I look at it. This is God's intervention. <laughs> it's like, right. That's all. Right. It's I was um, flying for business, and I usually would go into the. But before I get on the plane, I go to the gift shop and buy a couple magazines to read. Sure. And I always I like to pick up Oprah because she's got some pretty wise things she's, in her magazine. She's, she's pretty wise. Love her, love her. And this was September 2012, I guess. So about okay. five years ago. And I opened it up, and there was this article on highly sensitive that doc, and it talked about dr elaine aaron she was the one that first she was a research psychologist in the early 90s that actually wrote the first book and coined it highly sensitive people and because she herself was sensitive and she was going through some counseling and the counselor said i think you're highly sensitive <laughs> and so she and of course what does that mean yes that mean? and so she did all the research being i mean the perfect person on the planet to all of a sudden be told she's highly sensitive as a research psychologist. Right. So she went and researched it and wrote the book, The Highly Sensitive People. Okay. And she's written multiple books that are international. And so I, I sat there, and there's a, there was a little self-test in there also, and I answered all the questions off the charts. And I sat there for the first time. I was crying with tears of joy. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my God, this is for the first time. I saw me on this printed page in this magazine. And I go... This is, this is crazy, this is good, this is wonderful. Now what do I do with it? Now right. as a coach, I always would learn something new so that I could share it with my course, clients. Yeah. And raising your level. Yes, and I says, oh, I'm, I bet I'm going to have, I have highly sensitive clients, I can share this information with them, and they can grow and expand like I have. Now I got home and I started doing my own little research to find out exactly where I fit in, and that's where I found out about the high sensation seeker, because okay. Dr. Elaine Aaron also... Um, came up with an assessment what, for that too. What is that? That is someone that's usually more extroverted. They're okay. extroverted and they actually go out of their way to experience the high sensation of of having experiences. Like they're the ones that, that jump out of perfectly good airplanes with parachutes. Right. Okay. Or do okay. snowboarding. So adrenaline yeah. yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. So we're not Is it physical yeah. all the time? Um, from what I understand, for the most part, yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. it's mainly physical. Uh, yeah. Because you mentioned something that I connect with earlier. Yeah. You mentioned being in new places all the time. Yes. And, and I see, mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. I I need that, yeah. right? Yeah. And I also found out that I, I thrive on motion therapy. Yeah. Meaning, that's why I love the mm-hmm. gym, right? And that's mm-hmm. my non-negotiable. But when I'm driving... I, I, I'm, I'm in my zone. When I'm walking my dog, I'm, I'm a motion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I'm walking yeah. and moving. Mm-hmm. It's so does that tie in? Does that make sense yeah, for a highly yeah. sensitive person? Yeah, when you look at the assessment, it's all about, you know, experiencing new things and meeting new people right. and doing all this new And, and we, we tend to get bored easily <laughs> if yes. we don't have that. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, That's if we don't why have it's that. horrible in school. Yeah. Yeah. So, and those are the extroverts. So 30% of the Twenty percent are extroverts because I didn't quite fit in with the whole highly sensitive person model. Even though I checked yes on all the boxes, there was I'm like still, something's missing. Right, there was still yeah. it wasn't that perfect fit. Yeah, okay. Until I found her assessment on 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 highly on high sensation seekers, and I go, oh, I get perfect world now. <laughs> so so yeah. I probably am a combination of that then as yeah. well, and mm-hmm. that's. And that is what it is, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And you're born with both of those. Yeah. You're, yeah. I, I look at it this way. Explain to people, highly sensitive people is like an umbrella. Okay. We are all underneath, inside, under this umbrella, and in different spectrums and different, we're all unique. We're still unique mm-hmm. individuals. We just have this, these abilities and traits where we can connect deeply 
with people and with animals and with nature and we really deeply enjoy feeling deeply. They've done MRI, MRI studies on the brain where they, when they show someone a picture that's highly sensitive, the brain lights up deeper and longer versus someone that's not so highly sensitive. So I actually have this MRI study done on, on that. So, and they, they, they have found through research that it is also inherited. So there's somebody in your family that so you would have. Yeah, that it, it kind of goes. We were at an event together, right? Yeah. You were a speaker and I was a speaker. You spoke. Yeah. We made eye contact a bunch of times, but we never connected, okay. right? And then you spoke, and then I think a few speakers later, I came up and I spoke. Yeah. And after that, you would come up and introduce yourself. Yeah. And but there, there was probably that sensitive connection because I, when I, as you know, right? I, I have a. I have a, 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 a an outline, I guess, and I just come from here, right? Yeah. And and that's same with yeah. the show. I don't know what I'm going to ask you yeah. until it comes because yeah. I can't be in a lane. It doesn't work for me. I have to be in my own crazy lane. Mm -hmm. um, and but there was something that that you felt right, and then as soon as you came up and introduced yourself, it was instant for me as well. I call it just pure energy. It's almost like when you meet another sensitive person. You've come home. Mm. Yeah, all of a sudden, That's a good way to put it. All of a sudden, we feel like we can breathe. Mm. There's there's a sense of serenity. Yeah. 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 I, feel, yeah. I feel safe. Yeah. And it's all like instantaneous. It's, it happens so quickly and so fast. Right. And if you trust that, a lot of people don't trust it. Right. They're, they're just like, whoa, what's that? This is weird. And walk away from it. But once you understand what it is and you can trust it. Right. And then you meet some wonderful, blessed people on the planet. You're... you're and you're listening to it, and you and you're okay with it, uh -huh. right? And I think that's that's a lot of the things that you probably teach people. I do, and I also though also have to teach them when to close it off, mm. because when we are in our, our essence of okay. being sensitive and open, all kinds of weird people come up to us at all kinds of times, grocery store, post office, or whatever, and all of a sudden they're pouring out their whole life to us, oh, yeah. Yeah. and we're just like. Whoa, I don't even know your name. <laughs> right. They're right. telling us all about right. Right. everything and their deep, dark secrets in their life. And they don't understand why they're doing it. Mm -hmm. They just feel so completely safe and open with us. It's a great trait to have as a coach, yeah. you know, so that you, you can really intuitively help your people better. Right, right. However, it can be overwhelming. And then I do, if I don't watch it, I'm overwhelmed. Okay. There's times, I can only coach so many people at a time. Right. Because, and then I'm just like, okay, I need a day off. I need two days off. I need a week mm -hmm. off. Because I take in, the only way I can coach, I disappear. Okay. And I take in all of them. So it's like I'm walking in their shoes. Yes. Right? You're, and, you are so, yeah. you, you're, you're there. Yeah. If you and that's the only it, way I can help them. Me, you, you take it personal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah me too. Yeah. That's why I don't coach. <laughs> no, it's the truth. That's why I don't coach yeah. because I t I take it so personal. And then mm -hmm. for me, on a business end, knowing what how you know I've started, built, and sold businesses. So for me, on top of it, people that come to a lot of business coaches are not entrepreneurs, or they haven't been, and they want to be. Mm -hmm. And most people don't know what it's going to take to start a business. Right build a business, a successful business. Mm -hmm. They think they do, but then when the chips are down, yeah. and for me, I, I get so personal that as soon as I hear excuses, I shut off. I'm done. I, I just, I got to run. I got to go. <laughs> because So I'm not, I'm not that, you know, <laughs> when it comes down to it, I'm probably not that gr the greatest coach. And then I become the football coach. I start yes. yelling, screaming. Well, we, we want this negative energy that's showing up with people that come with excuses. We want this negative energy to just go away. Yeah. Because we'll take that on too. And we want to show them. Yeah. Like you want to shake them. Yeah. Like we can't we cannot separate our feelings. We cannot right. separate this, oh, today I'm only gonna feel joy and happiness and sadness and fear's not gonna show up. It doesn't we can't separate no. that because we're right. humans, it's whole. Yeah. So it all we get it all. I did a press conference yesterday for an event I'm gonna be speaking at down in Brawley. Yeah. The 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 lady that was running it said, you know, we got done and we everyone's ah, and they're all monster motivated, right? And she said, for anybody now out there that's not sure, should they come to this event? How do, what do we say to them? I said, listen, if they're not sure by now, 
then they're not sure what they are, what they're doing, and what they want to promote. Shame on them. And you can see her just like, <laughs> you know, like, are you kidding me? So, um, that I, I, and I can relate, like, but it makes sense to me why I feel that way. I'm like completely all in or all out. Yeah. You too? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. And that's highly sensitive people. And what's the second one? What's the title? High Sensation Seekers. High Sensation Seekers. Yeah. You started to coach this. You, you saw a boy, right? You, yeah. you read that yeah. article. Yeah. You read her books. Yeah. I, right? re I researched it because <laughs> I wanted to figure it out myself. Okay. And I thought I would just use it as a tool. I thought I would use it as information to help my clients. When you learn something, you learn it and then you kind of put it away and then pull it out when you need it, right? Yeah. But something kept telling me no more. You need to do more. You need to do more. And at the time, I had a coach. And, and I kept talking to her about it. And she goes, Johnny, you need to write a book. You need to write a book. And I'm like, no, really? No? Really? Really? <laughs> and she says, I'll help you. So she helped me. And I, I, from the day I committed to write that book to the day it was published, that book was done in 90 days. You ready? You ready for this? <laughs> this is unbelievable. This is unbelievable. So last year, I, this book was done. Yes. yes. I'm doing a show in Encinitas, Kelly Fitzgerald. Long story short, in the interview, I find out that she's a publisher. Yeah. Now, two months before that, it's a Saturday night. I'm in my office. I'm getting some work done. And I said, I want to write a book. But I'd rather have root canal than write a paragraph. Yes. Right? I'm not a writer. Yeah. Yeah. And so, but I wrote down the chapters. Ten chapters. Yes. Wrote down the chapters, just the titles. Put it up on my desk. And I just kept it there. Find out through the interview that she's a publisher wow. and did a wow. bunch of other things. Hit it off. Unbelievable. Get done the interview. I'm getting ready to leave. I'm in my truck. I text her. I said, Kelly, when you get back to Arizona, when you get settled, I'd love to talk to you about possibly doing a book. Right away. Text me right back. I'd love to do a book with you. Blah, blah. And I said, but here's the problem. I'd rather have root canal done than, than write a paragraph. So I audio. I never wrote a, a, a word in this book. I, and she, so she said, when, where's the book? I said, it's up here. She goes, okay, I've never done this. but So I audioed. I said, I will have every chapter in your inbox. Right? I said, but here's my only stipulation. I'm a momentum guy. So if we start, we got to get this done. A month and a half done. So is that part of yeah. who we are? Mm, it's, I think it's a driving force okay. that we have a high need to help other people. Okay. We have a real a high caregiver. need. caregiver. Yeah. Okay. A high need to... Like I said in my childhood, you know, my childhood was I always wanted to help someone else feel better because mm -hmm. I could see that they weren't happy. We have a high need to care about other people. Okay. And we do it deeply. So if this is going to be the vehicle to help other people, okay, we want to do it now. Yeah. Now. As, yeah. as fast as yes. we can. Yes. And as good as we can. Right. And get it out and that so that we can start helping other people. And once my book got out and it's being sold all over the world. Does this make sense to you? Here's how I describe myself. Mm -hmm. I want to help, well, two people. Mm -hmm. Anybody that wants to help themselves yeah. and anybody that truly can and I can do something about it, whether it's a person or an animal. Yeah. I want to be able, but there, for me, it's a, it's a complete line of once I feel like I'm enabling, I run. That's a non-negotiable for me. Right, yeah. You know, and once I can identify that, I'm checked out. I'm checked out of that relationship. Does yeah. that does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. It absolutely does. Yeah. It's it's and it's part of the, the mechanism that you learned. You probably learned it when you were little. Okay. It's something a mechanism that you learn to take care of your highly sensitive side. Yeah. When oh, you, when, you, when we so we a self preservation. Have, yes, we have to do that. If we 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 have a tendency to attract narcissistic behavior okay. in other people because mm. we have a high need to take care of them. They have a high need to get to want tons of attention. Mm -hmm. So we're giving them this attention, mm -hmm. and then they're like, oh, I like this. I like this person. I feeding, like this. Feeding, yeah, feeding. so we can, we can attract narcissistic people okay. into our lives, and then we enjoy being with them because they allow us to take care of them. Right. It's, it's a two-way street, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah. But it has to be healthy. Yeah. Yes. Right. Yes, it has to be healthy. And it, it's a level of love and connection where... Both people are 
meeting each other's needs at a high level. Okay. They're actually competing to see how happy they can make the other person. Right. But it's gotta yeah, be right. yeah, but it's gotta be both doing that. Right. Not and just one. So it's easy for a highly sensitive person. Well, I don't know, I don't know if it's easy. I guess it is. Uh, for a highly sensitive person to become that doormat, though. Yes. Right? Yes. And that's what you were saying earlier. When you start to feel that overwhelming, yeah. now you back off mm-hmm. and you and you close shop for a while. Right? Yeah. yeah. And, and feed you. Yeah. Because, you know, yeah. I, but you, what happens if you don't communicate this with the people in your life, you know, your, your family, your loved ones, you have to be able to learn how to communicate with. You just can't shut the, jo- the door for a couple of days and, right. and think that they're going to stick around. Right. Or, they're gonna or get understand tired. it. Yeah, yeah, they're going to get tired of that real quick right. and leave you in the dust. So you have to be able to communicate that I need this time to myself. Or I need you to take care of me right now. You have to communicate it and not let them know that the whole world's not going to crashing. It's not crash. It's just a moment. Right. And I need you in this moment to, number one, stop being selfish. It's not about you. It's right. about me right now. Right, right. <laughs> And I need that, and then give me some time, give me a couple hours, give me overnight, whatever it takes, and then I will. I need a hot bath with candles, whatever people need, they've right. got to communicate that I need that. Uh, and your loved ones have to support you in that. If they don't support you, they're not your loved ones. Right. And, and, and like you said, if they don't know it, how can they if support If they don't it? know it. Right? Yes. So the communication. And the biggest thing is when a parent doesn't understand that their child is highly sensitive. Okay. When the parent doesn't understand, the parent is just like, the parent thinks the child needs to have a thick skin to survive in this crazy world. And actually, it's the opposite. You know how many times I've had somebody tell me, you need to get a thick skin? And I'm just like, what even is that kind of thing, you know? And, but it's just the opposite, because sensitive people are actually, it goes back in history, we are the royal advisors to the world. If we live in our essence, if our abilities and traits, we're wise beyond our years. And we're the ones that tell the rest of the world and the person that we're with, um, now's not the time to go to war. <laughs> Maybe down the road, but now's not the time. Right. Now's the time to calm down and, you know. Breathe, yeah. Yeah, and do that, whatever. And But we need to be in our strength to do that. We have artists out there, beautiful artists. We go back in history. Abraham Lincoln, they, they're looking at him as being highly sensitive. And... And all these artists and singers and songwriters, oh, yeah. if, they weren't, if they couldn't tap into that sensitive, beautiful side of them, we wouldn't have all this beautiful piece of the world. And it's so interesting that I would never have titled myself years and years ago of being a creative person. But I love, like in business, when I can oh, work yeah. on logos yeah. and, and that, that creative part of me, it just something just opens up. Yeah. yeah. That's and, your zone of genius. Is that it? That's it. All right. And I also think, Dave, I know enough about you, too, is that you delegate. You get people, you bring people into your life that you can, that they can do what they're good at. Oh, And man. you hand it off to them so that you can stay in your zone of genius. It's so interesting, right? You're, you, It's beyond right on. Um, and it comes naturally to me. I'm always looking to fill those voids in, when we're talking business. Yeah. And, but, but, it, but it relates to personal, right? Yeah. Um, I always want to enhance my weaknesses so I can double down, triple down, quadruple down on my strengths. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and I have I actually have an affirmation on my phone. Uh, we're at the point now with the brand where I'm so focused on attracting that COO, that person that can help scale this, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and has experience and that's their DNA for the back end. So I can be the front end and we can just do this together, right. right? When I talk to people about this and I don't get deep into it, they think you're just looking for an investor. No, no, no. I'm looking for a partner. Yeah. I'm looking, and I need that. Yeah, yeah. you nailed it right on. Yeah. And 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 I just, I yeah, okay, we need that. Okay, let me fill this. Okay, mm-hmm. you're perfect for that. Okay, this, yeah. yeah, yeah. So you can keep doing, you, you know, and what you're And that's part of being a highly sensitive person because then you can um, understand it. Yeah, you can, and you have a sense. You have a, It's like we're we're great when we interview people and when we hire this somebody. And this, yeah, because yeah. we can. There's a sense of what 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 you want, what this person is going to say. Sometimes when I sit down with my sensitive friends for dinner or something like that, we sit there and Gloria's bliss without saying a word. Mm. We communicate on a on a 
different level. We don't have to say hardly anything at all, and we're just so happy just to be together. It's yeah. really a blessing. <laughs> yeah. You're back in your neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah, so your that. COO is going to be a sensitive person to some one degree or another. In, in, in one they, they're way, they're going to need to be one way or another, yeah. right? At least you know, right. or at least be willing to understand your sensitivity, right? So that you can work together. And I know now, right? I know that people are like, "Well, how how are you going to do that?" I said, "I will know. I will know. That's right. Instantly. That's right. I will know. There's no rhyme or reason. No, but it's going to be. You'll know. That's it. And I feed off of that. Like I feed off of in business for me. I love masterminds. I love that back and forth and the ideas and the I, I just I love that part of it. And and you get it. Since you've been doing this, how's it changed your life? Because because when I figured it out and now I own it, it's I don't own it as an identity. It's not a label that I put on myself and okay. I don't and I would never tell a sensitive person to walk around with that label. They say the two most powerful words in the English language, there's I am. Every yes, time you say yes. I am, everything you say after that, you your, own it. your body and yeah. your mind will do everything to yes. live into that title. Yes. So if you want to walk around with being uh, with the label of being highly sensitive, you're going to be a target for people pick, kind of picking on you. You're just, right. So it's not something you, want to sh you really want to share with the whole world mm -hmm. unless you're strong enough to do that. Right. I got to a place where I am strong enough that I can do that. Right. And that has to do with my whole life. My big why is, is to help all, all the people in the world, not just the sensitive people. I want to help the people that are not sensitive to understand the sensitive people. Sure. And sure. it's huge. I think it, it'll make a, it's a movement that's coming along. Mm -hmm. I'm not the only one doing it. I couldn't do this by myself. There's so many other coaches and healers out there and everything that are therapists that are coming up to the plate. When I first started doing this, there was two Facebook pages on highly sensitive people. Now there's six. There's a woman that spoke on TEDx about being highly sensitive. What you teach now, yeah. what you've learned, right, yeah. the last five years, studying and, and sharing and teaching Tony Robbins uh, information, which is beyond genius, when you started to identify that, Five years ago, yeah. right? Because you were with Tony 18 years. Yeah. Was it a natural? It, yes, it was. Yeah, I mean, it almost had to be. It, it was. Right? I mean. Yeah. Be because Tony himself is highly sensitive. Right. He may not, right. he may not acknowledge no. it. Or, 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 or a lot yeah. of people might not perceive it. Yes. Like yes. me, right? Yes. People would think highly sensitive. Yes. Right? No. But I see the traits and abilities yes. that he has. Yes. I've been with them long enough to, to yes. notice and that I see them, pop, they pop up. They pop, yes. pop, 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 and I go like, ah, And they're so there blatant to you. Yeah. Like they're just, yeah. yes. Yeah, so what he teaches and what he, what he, what he brings to the, to the table when he teaches, he comes from a place of deep, deep, loving, caring heart. Mm -hmm. And that is what, number one, is what I care about. Right. And you connect with. Yes. 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 He cares deeply and to the point of, yeah, he's going to yell at you. So that you wake up. Mm -hmm. you, know? you ever see Shallow Howl and he puts yeah. his hand on yeah. it's like, yeah, wake up. He's, because he cares deeply about people. And, and also, also, right, mm -hmm. because he understands how important your physical is yeah. to your learning, uh, understanding, yep. and then retention. You know, you know better than anybody. He mm -hmm. breaks that down. He does. And uh, honestly, that's where the monster motivator roar really became because of yeah. Tony Robbins. Because, as you know, I share, we can only be in one state of mind at a time, yeah. right? So if we're in that victim state for that moment, yeah. there's no room for gratitude, that's right. right? So that's where the monster motivator roar mm -hmm. came from because you, you're in a new state. Yeah. You're in that, that, that unstoppable state, yeah. you know? So I, that comes from my learning of, mm -hmm. from Tony Robbins. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we can change our state in an instant, in a heartbeat. In, in an instant. And it doesn't matter if you're highly sensitive or not. Yeah. It yeah. doesn't matter. There's times when I know lots of highly sensitive people, and I myself included, I tend to pick up on people's energies. Yeah. And it, and they could be on across the street in their own house. Yeah. And I'll and I'll feel something sad, great sadness, and I'll find yeah. out later that somebody in their family passed away or something. And I, and and, the, and in that moment, you know, it connects the dots. And other people are like that. We feel other people's energies and stuff, even when we're not in yes. a room. Yes. 
And we have to understand that what belongs to us and what does not belong to us. So when I'm all of a sudden instantly that sad for some reason, and it has nothing to do with anything that I've done or said or read or watched on TV or anything. But you just get that feeling? Yes. I d then I know that it's somebody else across the street or behind me or something. Mm. And and I've picked it up. Then, then there's my takeaway for tonight. Because I probably have not evolved enough to know that yet about me, right? But I'm sure if I looked... Well, not necessarily. Because not everybody feels other people's energies. Right, but I think I think there's times that I probably do, but I could never identify Maybe, it. Yeah. But yeah. here's what I, since knowing this, right, I'll go into a room and do an event, or, yeah. and and I just automatically scan yeah. and yeah. feel yeah. like, man, they're yeah. they are not loving themselves, right? Or there's somebody in the room, something that's, that's right, you know. right, <laughs> right, and and yeah. it's interesting too for me because. A lot, you know, most people, we're human, so we will, from first appearance, yeah. judge, yeah. you know, and I talked about that, yeah. and, you know, if anybody gets that on a daily basis, it's definitely me, yeah. right, and, uh, but the fun part is I always, a lot of times mm -hmm. when we talk, you're so much nicer than I thought, <laughs> <laughs> I get a kick out of that, uh, but I do, I scan, yeah. and I, and I, with, it's just natural, mm -hmm. does that, does that make yeah. sense? Yeah, yeah, it does, we, we scan for multiple, we want like, women scan to make sure we're safe. Women okay. are more apt, apt to do that than men are, number one. And the other one is, like, if there's somebody in the room that we're picking up off their energy, we want to make sure, like, that event that we met at, yeah. Okay, yeah. I was not feeling my best. Mm -hmm. I, I was, um, I had a, a, a really bad cold that I was coming off of, and I needed to stay contained, self-contained a lot mm -hmm. to reserve my energy so I could speak. And so I didn't mingle with people, and I kept myself closed off on purpose. And I noticed it. Yeah. Yeah. Could we talk about yeah, it? Yeah. Yeah. So that I, so that people, uh, somebody's energy wouldn't come into me, and I just purposely did that, mm -hmm. so I, so that I could take care of when the moment came that I stepped on stage, I could take care of the people in the room. Right. Right. You had it. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. had it. Yeah. yeah. So I managed that. That's emotional mastery. When you can decide and choose what state you're going to be in at any yeah. given moment, that's emotional mastery. And that's what I teach people. Okay. It's like so that you can thrive and be fulfilled mm -hmm. and be a sensitive person. Is that what you talk about really in your book? Uh, emotional mastery. Emotion, emotional, emotional mastery. Love that. Yeah. I love that. It's mm -hmm. I love that because I talk about a lot again, obviously we, we talk about the same things, right? Just different flavors. Um, it always don't give up the driver's seat in your life. And so many people do that, right? And they let other outside circumstances determine how they're going to feel. Um, but it's kind of interesting because as a sensitive person, right, highly sensitive person, if you can learn how to do that, your life will be very, controlled. Very chaotic. Right? Very controlled yeah. by the outside world. Yeah. If you want to really live the fullest life, the most fulfilled, then you, have, you really need to learn how to do that. Yeah. And that's what you teach. Yeah. Love that. That's what I mentor I love people that. with. Yeah. And you also teach um, public speaking. Public prof speaking. Professional speaking. Yes. Right? Coming from the authentic part of you, mm -hmm. coming from the heart. Mm -hmm. Well, it all began about a year and a half ago or so. I'm going networking out to try, you know, working to build my business. And I run into highly sensitive entrepreneurs. And they, they when I get up and speak, even if it's just a one-minute elevator speech talk, they want to know how I do that. They're just like, you're sensitive. How do you, how did you do this? How did you come to this? Could you please teach me? So I started teaching and I started creating workshops. And I started about a year ago. I had my very first three-day workshop and it was, oh, so much fun. And I learned a lot. They learned a lot. And we did, it just snowballed from there. I just kept coaching people and entrepreneurs, how, number one, how to grow their business, but also how to step into that power and the grace of being highly sensitive and being your authentic self. People think that when they get on stage, they have to be a performer. And then they lose themselves. The audience doesn't want you to be a performer. If they want a performer, they'll go to a professional performance. But no, they want to know who you are at your core and your soul. So we're going to, I'm going to help you understand to bring, and to bring that out. Who are you? 
and right. bring and don't be ashamed of it and don't be scared of it, own it. and own just it. own it and bring it out. I developed my own process, my, my own program, because I went to all these public speaking courses and I watched all of these professionals get up on stage with, you know, with Tony Robbins and everything. I, I, was, I was backstage with all these people getting on his stage and I watched their processes and who they are and, and all this training I took. And I go, okay, this doesn't work for me, but this does. This doesn't, you know, this over here is great, you but over, this is kind of like what whatever. The yeah, rest. Yeah. yeah, and so I says, okay, so this is what's going to work for sensitive people. And what really works is processes. Yes, there's a structure to a speech, A, B, C, D. You can get that anywhere on the internet, and they all and all the trainers yep. teach it. Yep. But what they don't teach is how to get rid of the fear of being up on stage, how to eliminate the filler words, it, and it's all processes, and it's and the process would be like a game, like we're gonna do it like you know Monday morning I'm gonna do a game for the first time I'm gonna do it with a group, and it's a it's I usually do the the stop, I stopped the, um, the filler word process. I use the same process that I used in, in my NLP and hypnotherapy to help someone stop biting their nails mm. because all of this is a habit. So I yeah. use the same process to get them to stop using all these funky filler words. And I'm gonna, for the first time, I'm going to do it with a big group on yeah. Monday morning. I'm so excited. So process is so much, import, so much more important than the, than the structure. It's almost like here's a structure. You're going to do A, B, and C. But you know, if you get up and the structure's not working for you, throw it away. Just right. be you. That that that's it. It's it's really that simple, right? Yeah. It's like life. Simple, not always easy. Yeah. But just be you. Yeah. Be you, and let the chips fall where they yeah. may. And it takes all the pressure off. I always tell people, your story's not about you. You were bad enough to make it through. Now it's your obligation yeah. to share that story. Exactly, whatever share the story that is. Story. And there's a, the biggest story. This is the most important story of your speech. There's a core story that comes from your soul that is not the hero's journey. Everybody that gets on stage right. talks about the hero's journey, about right. I was, you know, one time this, I did this, and now I'm here. But what happens with that's attached to, the, to your business that you're doing? What happens if your business disappears tomorrow? Your story is going dis to also disappear with it. Because it's attached, but there's a core story that came from your from the day you were born, your childhood, that will never ever go away. It's the reason why you do what you do. Right. It's like my story. What's my story? Right. Because I would go and sit in the corner with somebody lonely and take care of them. Mm -hmm. That will no matter what business I decide to do, that story will never go away. And that's the most important story ever you could ever tell in your speech. Yeah. You've got to tell it. It, it's all about... And, and you're going to have multiple stories, Mul right? Yes, multiple stories for and different reasons. For, absolutely. Yeah. Like, you you know, I shared my story about my parents, yeah. and life is perception. Yes. And you can decide to look for the gifts, mm -hmm. or you can look for all the negative, yeah. right? Yeah. And so, that for you're right. Yeah. It's it's absolutely that, right? Yeah. My beginning story, It's and I say this, thank God, it's not at the start that's as important as the yeah. finish. Right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and, uh, but, yeah, own it. Just yeah. be you. Yeah. I, I love that. Like you said, you're, how do you stand? Where do you put your hands? What do you, we're not even thinking about that right now, no. right? So why would you do that when you're up there, yeah. right? Is there anything that we didn't talk about that you want to share? Hmm. Well, we talked about a lot, didn't we? I know, but it was good. <laughs> it did. Yeah. Lost it. My heart goes out to sensitive entrepreneurs because we feel deeply and think deeply okay. to a point of, where we don't know what to say. Okay. We don't know how to communicate our business or our product or our service so that people understand it. Okay. That's that it goes back to when <laughs> you're in a room full of 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 people that are not highly sensitive and you tell a joke and they don't get it. It it, it is because yes. yeah, yeah, they don't get it because yeah. and so now what I teach when I coach and mentor my highly sensitive people, I go, when that happens, you just look at the other eighty percent of the room and you say, Oh, that's okay, you're just the other eighty percent. Right. And you walk away and leave <laughs> right. them guessing. Exactly. <laughs> but the same thing happens when we're trying to market our business. Is that the other eighty percent are not going to hear our message unless we can say it in a way that they can hear it. And maybe they're not our customer. Maybe that's okay. That's, that's okay, but you have to understand, I didn't think that I would end up coaching husbands and parents of sensitive children. They themselves are not sensitive, but they ended up paying me and hiring me to coach them so that they could understand their sensitive family members. Right. Change the world forever.
forever. And to be able to leave a legacy like that, because right. what I did is I changed the course of history in those children and their children's children. Absolutely. And that gives me goosebumps. Absolutely. And the greatest gift that an adult can give any child is a strong, powerful self-image. Yeah. Right? And that's part of what you do. But they got to understand it. No, that's what, yeah. that's what I mean. Because yeah. look what it's done for us. The clarity. The okay. I get it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That just, all that does is reinforce our self-image. Yeah. So if you could do that at a young age, yeah. it's awesome. It was, it was awesome. Yeah. Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. I had a great time. So, yeah. as always, and you know this better than anybody, yeah. we, we end the show the same way. Yeah. Every time, right? <laughs> and now you know where the Monster Motivator roar comes and came yeah. from. So that's even a bigger connection for you. We can only be in one state of mind at a time at that moment. Might as well make it a good one. Right? And, <laughs> right? Why not? And I always say life makes the rules. We don't. And life is asking you if you could be in that unstoppable state the majority of your day, how would that feel? It would feel phenomenal, mm -hmm. right? And we both know through Tony Robbins that your physical state is very important. So we're going to take this out. Once the motivator stop. You okay. ready? Okay. We're going to do ready? this on three. <laughs> one, two, three. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Awesome, that was a monster.